don't want to see bug bait in anybody's car that stops by here after having visited somewhere else. If you got snails and slugs, iron phosphate baits kill them very, very effectively, and yet they're totally safe for kids and for pets and things like that. An iron phosphate bait that we find to be best and most effective is called Sluggo, S-L-U-G-G-O. If you want to kill pill bugs as well, you put some spinosad, which is another bacterial compound in there that uh, kills the uh, pill bugs very effectively, and you call it Sluggo Plus. So if you are troubled by these creatures in your garden, this is the stuff you want to use. Now, there are other ways to, uh, to kill snails and slugs. I think, uh, you know, one of the best things is beer. And you would be amazed. You put out a little container of stale beer. We, I don't know if we still have, we used to have something called uh, slug pubs. And there were a little deal with a little umbrella over them and a little basket underneath and then a uh, container. And you pour about half a beer in there and you go out every day and you'd empty out and dump out several hundred dead snails and slugs. I loved them for two reasons. They were effective. And number two, they only hold half a beer. And you just can't waste that stuff. You know you don't have it in there, you got to do something with the other half. But anyway, very effective way of killing snails and slugs. Uh, the only problem with that, and as you probably know, I have a new lab puppy. My old lab that I had, you know, always thought that that beer was God's gift to dogs, and so I could never keep it out in the garden because Maggie would go along and find a way to get her nose in and inhale it all. But anyway, it's a great way to control it. Question? Which uh, beer brand worked best? Uh, you know, I have thought about conducting an extensive survey, and I haven't done it yet, but uh, let's just say I've never found one that didn't work. And it's not the alcohol they're going after. It's the, uh, it's the yeast. What's that? Having a variety works. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that'd be worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. We have a lot of geckos. Does the blood meal will that hurt them? No, and it won't bother them. It won't repel them. Geckos are great creatures. They're some of the best bug eaters out there. Uh, so yeah, I love geckos, and uh, I know it will not bother them in any way. And if you want to have geckos around, just put a light up against a you know a wooden surface or something like that for them to climb up and go out at night. You'll see them just sitting around there waiting for the bugs to come in, the moths and things to come in. Unfortunately, they eat lots of lace wings and other beneficial insects, but uh, yeah, geckos and toads both are great, great eaters of troublesome insects. What yes. about ro roaches? I just took up, roaches. Uh -huh. I just took up that you know that ivy that's always on the ground, and mm -hmm. I think I, all the roaches in town were there. <laughs> now, <laughs> it wasn't just the ivy, but anywhere you've got a moist, dark place, you will have roaches. If you want to kill I'm roaches, make that into a garden area. Uh, the roaches will be gone. Um, don't worry about uh, them being there. If you want to spray something that will kill roaches very effectively, a green light product called Bioganic, B-I-O-G-A-N-I-C. Bioganic <laughs> is a combination of uh, thyme oil, sesame oil, and cove oil. And somehow you put these three harmless oils together and it forms a compound that attacks a, a nerve receptor site that insects have called the octopanic nerve site. Have. So it's totally safe for us, but uh, bioorganic will kill roaches very effectively for up to two weeks after you spray. Do they weigh into much? Ants, the only ants that you're likely to have in your garden that are a problem are fire ants. Uh, there is a bait which contains uh, bioorganic is what we're talking about for roaches, B-I-O-G-N-I-C. Uh, for fire ants, the uh, product we call spinosad, or spinosad, depending on who you ask, uh, kills ants very, very effectively. Greenlight puts it on a bait, which is effective for fire ants and harvester ants, and they call it fire ant bait with conserve. And I just go out and sprinkle this through the garden. I do it four or five times a year. Because it's totally safe. We had somebody that raised his chickens want to know if it would hurt their chickens. So I called the manufacturer and they said, no, you can sprinkle it through a, through a chicken yard and it won't hurt a thing. But that's the best control for ants that I know of if you want something you can dust around. Now, in your house, and we'll just talk about ants for a second, but believe it or not, one of the very best ant killers out there is aspartame, NutraSweet. And uh, that might tell you something about whether you ought to be using it in your drinks or not. But uh, the little old blue powder, uh, you know, put it in a bottle cap or something and put it out, and it'll kill virtually all ants. If you want to kill carpenter ants, mix it with orange juice, because they're apparently really attracted to the orange juice.
But the blue sweetener is one of the best ant killers in the world. When yes. I go to a restaurant and I see the packets, I grab a bunch. <laughs> Keep them in my garage. Yeah, pretty good ant killer, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't have that problem. Okay, so uh, any any other insects you want to talk about at this point? Yes, sir. Is there any one <laughs> Your foot. No. Yeah, that's the best one. The uh, old Chinese proverb says the best insecticide is the footprint of the gardener. <laughs> Used to have a girl work for me and want to work with Alton Grimm and she'd get on one of those big old snails and she'd go, you won't have the guts to do that again. So, yeah. That's the only, that's the only waterproof, uh, fairly effective killer of all things. Yes, sir. Bob, I picked up a bunch of that uh, Christmas tree mulch last year and I put it on in, around my beds. Yeah. And, I, and it's been engulfed indul with uh, the grub worms. Okay. I mean, I'm talking about 100 per, per, per Big grub worms or small, no. small ones? Okay. You know, I would always be tempted to, uh, in effect, let some of them pupate and hatch out to see what they are, because every beetle out there has a grub as a larval state, and 95% of them are harmless. The five, other 5% five will destroy the roots on your plants and your grass and everything else. So I don't know if these, these are damaging grubs. Yes, they have lost their Copper Canyon daisies. Okay. It's, it's, they're just... Soak it with beneficial nematodes. They'll kill them out very, very quickly. And you get lots more nematodes. Two nematodes get together in a grub worm. They produce 100,000 baby nematodes within a week or so. Wow. Good stuff. But if you see those big old grub worms that yeah. you sometimes see in compost piles, those are the larval state of a rhinoceros beetle. Yeah, we have those. We don't touch those. Yeah. No, unless you have... I've been told that they can do damage to palm trees, among other things. People in Corpus Christi tell me they have problems with them. But here, no. They're just useful for scaring people and fish bait. I tend to leave them alone for the most part. We have people bring them in all the time. They come in with this jar and they've got this grub worm that's as big around as your thumb and they're obviously terrified. And if they look like they have a sense of humor, I will usually look at them and say, say you know, my God, you didn't get dome dirt in your yard, did you, or something like that. This is a mutant grub that's going to eat your whole house. And then you have to break down and tell them the truth that it's just a different kind of people. It's totally harmless. Okay. Moving on They're from uh, those leafy things, by the end of October, we can plant root crops. Radishes, carrots, beets, turnips, all those things grow very, very easily. The seed is a little larger, especially on beets, and you can spread it out a little bit better, but you're invariably, you're still going to have lots of little seedlings come up. You're going to have more than you need. And again, thinning is critically important. If you want to have good big radishes or beets or whatever else. And uh, if you don't thin them, all you'll have is tops. You know, you'll have a hundred little radishes in an area this big and all the bees a thin stem. You'll never get, you know, a big bulb on it. So go through and thin them out. Again, you don't have to throw them away. You can eat them. They're absolutely delicious. You can wash them, throw them into a salad, whatever else. But all of these little seedlings are quite tasty and quite, quite nutritious. But, um... No particular secrets on radishes or turnips or uh, beets. Uh, the one thing about carrots is that our soils tend to be very shallow here. And so, you know, if you're dreaming of getting a carrot that's this long and soil that's this deep, you haven't thought it through. <laughs> the carrot's only going to get as, as long as your soil is, you know, deep in a healthy fashion. So we tend to grow shorter carrots in our gardens here. There are a number of little short carrots out there. There's one called Danvers, D-A-N-V-E-R-S, Danvers Half Long. Uh, there's one called Nantes, N-A-N-T-E-S. It's a little short one. And some of these little, there are some little semi-baby carrots, all those, those things you buy at the grocery store look like baby carrots. Those aren't little carrots. They peeled off the outside, just whittled them down to be a little carrot. They didn't start out small. But there are some good so-called half long carrots uh, that you can grow very well you know, in this part of the country. But exactly the same thing goes as goes for the lettuces and things like that. Thin them out if you want to have good quality produce. <clears throat> now, when we get to about December, maybe mid-November on into December, again, just have to watch the weather and see, it's time to plant onions. And a lot of people around here tell me the best thing I grow in my garden is onions. I, I have a waiting line for onions. <laughs> 
onions are best planted as small plants. Now, a lot of people confuse uh, onion plants and onion sets, and a lot of people use the terms interchangeably, and they are not the same. Onion sets are little bulbs. They're little onions that were started and then forced into a temporary dormant state. And you buy them as little bulbs. They're about the size. Oh, they're bigger than an English pea. They're big as a marble, I guess would be the way to describe it.